Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to spend a little time unraveling the mysteries of EFI Fox body wiring harnesses. These cars have two major wiring harness components. The EFI harness, or the computer harness it's sometimes called, and the dash harness or body harness it's sometimes called. If your car is going to work right, these two harnesses have to be compatible with each other. So I'm going to give you a few tips to help you understand what you might have for harnesses, what you might need for harnesses, and how to get harnesses that are going to work together. Now, there's more to it than just the two major harnesses in the car. There's a whole bunch of sub harnesses. Some of them are particularly important to get right, like the oxygen sensor sub harness. But you've got to build a good foundation, which is getting your main harnesses to work right. Why would you care about any of this? Well, the number one reason is if you're doing a four cylinder to V8 swap. Another reason might be if you're uh, replacing a damaged harness in a car, uh, it might be too cut up, you might have a, had a fire, uh, those kind of things. And you need to make sure that the harness components that you're putting in or sourcing are compatible with each other. Another reason you're going to care about this kind of situation is if you take on a basket case car like this one, you may not have any idea what the state or origin of any of the wiring in the car is. That's certainly the case with Project Bad Decision here. And you need to go through it all as one of the front loaded parts of your project because if you don't have the wiring right, you don't have a foundation for a car that's going to run right. You're trying to fix one of these cars. You're trying to do a V8 conversion on one of these cars. If you start with a uh, 87 through 89 car and you're sure that the dash harness is correct for the year of the car, then you should be able to use an EFI harness from an 87 through 89 car. And if you're gonna use mass air, you can just convert that harness to a, a mass air harness and then use a, uh, a mass air computer with it. If your car is a 90 through mid 92, you need to use an EFI harness that's designed for a 90 through mid 92 car. If you don't, you're gonna have some problems when you go to tie it all together. If your car is a mid 92 to a 93, you're gonna to need to use harnesses that are from mid 92 to 93. If you just try to plug your 87 EFI harness into your 93 dash harness, you're gonna have a whole bunch of problems. <laughs> a little additional twist on this is the oxygen sensor sub harness. So there are differences in that harness depending on the year and depending on the transmission type. If you have a 87 to 88 oxygen sensor sub harness, there is no loop back in that harness. So you can use that harness with an automatic transmission or a manual transmission, and it's not gonna burn up the uh, PCM. If you have an 89 or later oxygen sensor sub harness, they're different depending on whether it had an automatic or a manual transmission. And if you use a manual transmission computer, like an A9L, and you plug that into a harness that's got a automatic transmission sub harness connected to it, you're gonna burn up the SIG return trace on the A9L. If you use an automatic computer, you can use it with either style of harness. But if you use the manual computer, you must have that harness pinned for manual. Also, there are a couple of different pinouts for the loopback for the manual transmission, depending on the model year. So uh, that whole thing is its own separate topic, really. But you've got to be sure about that oxygen sensor sub harness when you put the thing together. Or not only will it not work right, you run the risk of burning up your precious A9L or A3M PCM. By now, your head's probably swimming. How are you going to figure out what parts you have, whether they're compatible with each other, and whether your car's ever got a chance of working using the factory style harness and computer? I don't like to say I'm a definitive source for this, but I have a pretty good idea what I'm looking at. And I'm going to go over some of the 
fairly easy to see tells on these harnesses that are going to help you narrow down what it is you're looking at and what it is that you have. One of the key tools you're going to need is a multimeter. One of the other really important things you're going to need are wiring diagrams. This book for fuel injection and electronic engine control by Charles Probst 88 to 93 is a really good source. There's good wiring diagrams for pretty well all of the Fords in that era in this book. And this is a book that was uh, so good it actually has a Ford part number. The diagrams for the EFI harness are relatively easy to come up with. There are some online sources and so on. An EVTM manual is very helpful. Uh, that's, a, that's a Ford factory manual. Usually it will include things like connector pinouts, uh, component locations, connector locations, harness numbers, and circuit diagrams for the various uh, subsystems on the car. If you're really gonna go through this, you're gonna have to have some resources like that. And even if you do, <laughs> it can still be a little bit challenging. Okay, let's talk about toning out the EFI harness to try and determine for sure what it actually is. You're gonna need a multimeter. You wanna set your multimeter on the continuity check function. You'll find that if you touch the leads together in that mode, you'll get a tone. You should always touch the leads together and check for tone before you begin doing this test so you can be sure that the meter is set right and working. One way to tell whether the harness is an 87 or 88 Mustang harness is to check which pins on the PCM connector, the tab TAD or air management valve uh, connectors are tied to. So in this case, if it's, a, if it's an 87 or 88 Mustang, the control uh, circuits on these tab TAD solenoids should come back to pins uh, 51 and 11. If it's a later harness, like any of the mass air harnesses would be 89 and up, then those should come back to positions 38 and 32 on the harness. Whenever I do this, I always try and identify which pin is number one and I mark it on the connector just so that there's no confusion. So this is the number one pin. You can see it's on the opposite side from the uh, connector guides and that's been marked. What's an easy way to tell which side is uh, number one? Well, you see these two heavy uh, red wires on the back? They're the only wires like it on here. Those should be in positions 57 and 37. And then these two heavy black wires with green tracers, those should be in positions 40 and 60. So the harness is numbered one on this side, one through 20, then 21 to 40, then uh, 41 to 60. So if you go over here, you go, oh, either this one's 60 or this one's 60. So you go over here and look and you go, oh, look, there's two heavy black wires. Those are the 60s. And uh, there's two red wires that are offset by three from the black wires. Those are the 57 and 37. We know what it is just from the position of these wires. It's a, it's a fairly easy tell. Okay, so uh, we're gonna check this harness. We think this is an 88 Mustang harness. So one of these should tone back to 51. What I like to do is use paper clips with the end bent out. And then I use uh, alligator clips like this. And I'm gonna insert that in the pin 51. Then I'm gonna take the other end here and I'm gonna check uh, these wires. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a continuous tone back. So we know that that's pin 51. And I can check the other ones. That's not gonna give me anything. That's not gonna give me anything. That's not gonna give me anything. Um, I can also check pin 11. So that would be that one and that should be on the other connector. 
and it is. So that's a good sign that this is an 87 or 88 Mustang harness. Another thing that can sometimes happen is you end up with a truck harness. Now there's a key difference between the uh, batch fire truck harnesses and the SEFI Mustang and Thunderbird and whatnot harnesses. And that is that for the batch fire truck harnesses, there are only two injector positions back here where there are eight for the uh, SEFI harness. So what I suggest always is to check a few of these. So we're gonna, we're gonna get the uh, engine side with the injectors. When you look at this, you can see the part with these two uh, connectors here, this is the passenger side. One of these is the coolant temp sensor, the other is the, um, is the EVAP canister. So that's the passenger side. Uh, this side here is the driver's side and it's got the oil pressure uh, plug on it. So we're gonna kind of flip these around so that we have them laid out kind of like they would be if we were looking at the front of the car. Here's my passenger side. This is the number one fuel injector connector here. So we're gonna tone that back based on this harness to where uh, number one should be. And if I look here, number one fuel injector is supposed to come back to pin uh, 58. How do you know which one of the wires is which? Well, you'll see all of the connectors have a red wire. The red wire is the power. The control on the fuel injector is a ground switch, which is managed by the computer. So the other side of this is a, is a colored wire or a wire that'll be a different color or have a different tracer uh, for each of the connectors. And that's the control wire. The control wire is the one that we're gonna check back here. So number one should go to pin 58. So that's 60, 59, 58, we'll plug in there. And then we're gonna check our number one uh, connector and we're going to check the wire that isn't red which is like a tan colored wire I don't know if you can hear that but that gives me a continuous tone so we know that we have that hooked up then we'll go ahead and check um, injector 2 which according to our diagram that should be on pin 59 so that's the one next over and this is injector 2 let's check that yes so go through each of those and make sure that each one of these eight injector connectors tones back to the correct and independent pin on the computer harness if it's one of the batch fire truck harnesses then four of the injector harnesses are going to tone back to pin 58 and the other four are going to tone back to pin 59 and there'll only be two pins on the computer harness that they connect to. That's a sure sign that you're not dealing with a Mustang harness. One thing, <laughs> one thing to note when I'm looking at this harness, someone's cut off the oxygen sensor ground here. Uh, that's no good. If you're gonna use this, you're gonna have to put a big ring terminal on here and ground this to the back of a cylinder head or the manifold or the transmission. Normally it would ground to the back of the uh, driver's side cylinder head. Let's start with the EFI harness. A good way to differentiate it is whether or not there's a mass air connector. This harness that's in the car does not have a mass air connector on it. Now, if you're sure it's out of a Mustang and it doesn't have a mass air connector, it should be an 87 or 88 harness. One thing I find very curious about this one that's in the car is that it does have these white connectors here, which, um, those connectors are for an airbag system, yet this harness doesn't have any mass air connector. So it's hard to be truly sure what this harness is out of. This connector here, uh, you can see it's not hooked up to anything, it hasn't been for some time, it's all covered in undercoat and whatnot. That's, a, that's for an air conditioner relay. So, uh, don't worry if your car's not air conditioning, if you got something like this on the end of it, uh, that's really not gonna be a problem. The two harnesses connect together by the brake booster on the uh, driver's side near the firewall. The early harnesses use uh, a two plug 
arrangement there to plug the EFI harness and the dash harness together. The late harness uses a single plug. And that's an easy way to tell when you're looking at these harnesses, whether it's the late harness or the early harness. Here you can see the mass air connector actually plugged into the mass air meter on this 93 Mustang. And you can also see these white connectors, which if you trace them, are plugged in to the airbag crash sensors at the front of the car. This is one of them. Another thing you're going to see in the late 92 to 93 harness, these relays up here, uh, these relays are inside the cab on the earlier harnesses. One way to break down your dash harness is to look for things that should be on an early harness or should be on a late harness. When Ford introduced the airbags in 1990, that brought a bunch of new stuff into the harness. And one of those things is supposed to be the airbag diagnostic module, which would sit up under here. And that would be plugged in to this area of the harness. So you would be looking for the airbag diagnostic module and you'd be looking for two separate connectors that come off of that for the airbag diagnostic module. This harness does not have those connectors. So that's a pretty good sign that, this, that the dash harness in this car is an 87, 88, or 89 dash harness. Of course, the car is an 88, so it's leading me to believe that this may be the original dash harness. Another good check on your dash harness is to look at this connector. This connector is one of the connectors that plugs into the multifunction switch. Now, the same connector is used from 87 to 93, but this connector is wired differently for 87 to 89 from 1990 to 93 and there's a different multifunction switch so checking the wiring on this connector will give you a good idea as to whether this is the early style dash harness or the late harness so what should you look for if you look at the back of this connector this here is pin four and that has a black wire with a white tracer in it and then this is pin three, and it has nothing in it. That is the configuration of the 87 to 89 harness. Now, if this was the 90 to uh, 93 harness, okay, on the late uh, harness like this for the multifunction switch, this pin, which is four, is unpopulated. These two pins here are populated. That's a really good way to determine whether you're looking at the earlier or late harness when you're looking at the dash harness. Okay, well, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into how to identify the harness that you have and at least get harnesses that are somewhere in the ballpark when you do your project. Thanks for watching.